everybody. We've got a very important session now coming uh, from uh, Mr. Neeraj Dotel, Managing D Director, CompuWare India Software Operations Private Limited. And he's going to speak on SLAs and performance in the cloud because there is more than just availability. Please come in, sir. Thank you. I think we just heard in the last session what the first steps towards building a private cloud might be uh, from Professor Ravindra. I'm going to tell you that the first step for investing in a public cloud decision would be to use something free. Go to our website, go to the booth if you don't believe us, because we are the world's largest measurement company and we are monitoring and measuring the performance of every large cloud service provider worldwide. So whether it's Azure or whether it's Amazon or anybody, their performance in different cities, in different locations, in different countries, on different form factors is actually available free of cost for you to analyze and make a decision. Now, one of the things we've realized is that, you know, when you, when you take a cloud decision, it's, it's usually for making sure life is easier for you. Uh, having said that, you know, you're outsourcing the hassles of maintaining your own data centers or managing your own networks. But at the same point in time, there is a, there is a resulting fear that, am I going to get the SLAs I need from my cloud vendor? It's an IDC survey that said a lot of people have three major concerns when it comes to the cloud. The first one being security, the second one being availability. A lot of people actually said, you know, performance is a big consideration for me when I'm moving my applications to the cloud. It could be public, it could be private, and increasingly, you know, there is, there is going to be no differentiation. We all know the world is going to be hybrid. Well, the funny part is this, when everyone says that performance is a key consideration for me in a cloud decision, it's actually surprising that very few people enforce those SLAs. An example, and this is, this is the, the really rotten part about living in the 21st century and in the second decade of the 21st century is if you put something up and if somebody doesn't like it, it could be, a, it could be anybody. If they don't like it, within 30 seconds or one, one minute or probably less, based on their perception, is tweeted or liked or disliked, and the whole world knows about this. And we all know what's happening in IPL with tweets and, and the consequences of tweets, right? And this is the world of where reputations are built and reputations are destroyed by one person whose comment suddenly goes viral. And this is an, this is an example of a tweet about Amazon's website, you know, Amazon's cloud offering. So some sysadmin somewhere said, Amazon's cloud looks like it's down. We dug into, into this specific instance. Amazon had very, very clear SLAs with, with the company in question. It did not violate any of those SLAs. Having said that, the, the people on the ground kind of felt an absence or felt a, felt a bandwidth choke, a lack of responsiveness. And this comment went suddenly viral. Let's look at the current state of cloud SLAs and people who are, who are making the early adopters who have made the investments both in India and outside. You know, Think about people like GoGrid, Rackspace, Amazon. Everything is, again, in terms of underlying infrastructure. And the whole purpose of cloud is to take away this dependence on infrastructure, on physical, on physical stuff, if you will, and abstract it all out into a completely transparent set of services. So you look at the SLAs that, that most of the cloud, offering, cloud, cloud service providers are offering, like 100% server uptime, 100% network uptime, 99.995% regional availability. Where is the performance SLA in all of this? I mean, this is a data center SLA, right? This is your CPUs will work and your servers will work and the network will be up and running. But contextually correlate this to what's actually happening from the people who really matter. And, and think about it this way. The whole idea, if you're looking at a public cloud especially, is that there is no capacity guarantee. They will tell you. They will give you the networks. They will give you the servers. They'll, they'll, they'll give you so much CPU, so much storage, all of those things. But if you look at it, and this is, consider this as application A. Suddenly, for a three minute window, the throughput or the load on the system just spikes up, right? There is a little increase in response time, which is only to be expected. But with a cloud environment, what happens to application B? The throughput is the same, the response time is suddenly spiked. Therefore, we think it's very increasingly important, and this is, this is a concept called stealing time, and everyone who's looking at cloud is, is, is fairly aware of this, right? It's increasingly important to measure your performance SLAs in terms of response times. And the prevalent belief is so far tools haven't been able to capture what is the response times. 
Priorities, again, you know, the people who really see the, the true potential of the cloud, not the people who are doing it because somebody else is doing it, not Bank B because Bank A did it last year. The people who see the true potential of the cloud have realized that it's not about the infrastructure. The focus has got to be on business value, which is my own application or my own set of applications. And the performance SLA must impact that specific application. It is quite possible you may have different SLAs for different applications depending on their need. Let's think about it in terms of what are possible meaningful SLAs, and we are seeing a few early adopters drive this. So they are now putting their service providers under pressure to give them end-to-end -end response times, irrespective of what happens in the data center, what happens on the infrastructure level. Again, the SLAs around throughput continue, but application availability. It should not be application availability as measured in the cloud service provider's data center. It should be application availability measured on the ground, real-world users everywhere. And it, are we able to give a consistent experience to our customers irrespective of form factors, right? Because, I mean, I, I spent 12 years on Microsoft. The world was Internet Explorer in those days. I mean, if you tell me IE is the most prevalent Internet access system today, you know, a lot of people will laugh, right? Because that's really not the case. We don't even know whether a desktop browser is going to be the Internet access medium in the future. So coming back to performance SLAs need to be application specific. And the current set of cloud SLAs do not cover that. And we'll, we'll talk about why they don't cover that. Gen general marketing slide, a lot of people are actually concerned that I don't want to move to the cloud because if there is a performance impact on what's happening there, I could lose money. And this is a, this is a genuine benchmark report commissioned by us that showed that enterprises in North America where, again, time is money, and I think time is money everywhere, is becoming the currency of the present, not just the future. They've actually said, Performance issues on the cloud have cost me about a million dollars in revenue, a million dollars in business. Now, in, in the West, we, we, we actually measure this as a, as a function of productivity, as a function of time spent to rectify problems. But even if you don't look at it from that perspective, think about business loss, right? Like I said, reputation management is just one part of it. But because we do this day in, day out, and we are, we are publicly benchmarking the world's most busy websites, and we're benchmarking this across, you know, 163 countries. We've kind of seen that response time is a, a great indicator of page abandonment. Unless you have a proprietary set of products or services that people have to come to you, after six seconds they're gone. Right? The sweet spot is actually about three and a half to four seconds. It's actually reducing at the rate of half a second every six months in terms of user expectations around performance and response times. In some countries, especially in the Far East, in, in Korea, for instance, user expectations of response times on mobiles are actually higher than that on PCs. I'll come back to how this impacts the cloud, right? I mean, if you think about it this way, like everyone's aware of this, as a user, I really don't care what's behind all of this. I want my application to render on my PC, on my iPad, on my phone, on a Blackberry if I need to. But the reality is that behind every service that's offered on the cloud, there is a set of multiple, you know, disparate services from dif different vendors, different content sources, CDNs, other guys who offer point solutions for calculations and billing, payments. All of this is actually assembled at the endpoint. Which, again, comes back. In, in the old days, it was like two-tier architecture, mainframes and clients, or, you know, server client in India especially, then we moved to three tier, then we moved to, you know, web-based applications and architectures and, you know, the need for having multiple load balancers, splitting up the load. Uh, increasingly with, with things like big data especially, it's not just load balancing happening at the front end, it's, it's load balancing happening at the back end with distributed databases, right? Uh, and users are coming in on users, our customers or employees, they're coming in across multiple access points. Once upon a time, you said, if my server is up, my network is up, and my database is running, my application should, should behave perfectly. But you know, the reality is that even after your IT guys will tell you everything in the data center is green, your users are complaining. We, we, we know, we understand why this is happening, because all, all of this measurement is all internal. Things can be absolutely green in your data center. But users will comment and users will face different performances in different locations on different, in different contextual situations. And when you think about today's architectures, 
It's like, you know, there's so many, so many points of failure. It's not even funny that anybody who thinks that they're investing in a tool that does server monitoring, CPU monitoring, database monitoring, and that is the answer to your problems is, is smoking something, okay? This is not the answer. Because with all of this, there are so many, so many, you know, blind spots. You don't have a complete view of the application. And this, this contextually applies not only to an application hosted in your data center, in a virtualized environment, it could also be a cloud-based application that you're offering to your users. The focus historically, especially in India, has been on infrastructure. If my infra is good, everything should be good, right? There's really no, there's really no impact, no visibility into what, what the end user is facing. Our philosophy is very simple. Application management for the sake of doing application management is, is just a waste of money. It has to be taken in from the context of the, of the end user. The end user could be the guy who's sitting on your order entry terminal. It could be a consumer who's buying something off your portal. It has to be measured from the, from the end user's perspective, right? Which is why, like I mentioned, we are the world's largest testing company. We measure everything from the real world perspective and we're able to see the performance that's coming in from end users across any device, across any form factor, across any operation, uh, operating system or browser. We're also paying about 150,000 people money to stay connected. Okay, we, we pay about 150,000 people worldwide. In India, we've got about 3,000 active users. My goal is to, to increase the number of active users to about 10,000 by December. And these are people who we pay money to, to keep their, their PCs connected to the internet. And we use their IP addresses to send synthetic transactions to our customers' websites. And these are across 22 different cities, so tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, we've got them all covered. Now you want the performance of Indian Railways, IRCTC.com in Bhubaneswar versus Bangalore versus Delhi, across multiple combinations of service providers, you've got it. You want performance of IRCTC.com on, on Windows, on Firefox, on, on an iPhone, you got it. Right? We've also deployed enterprise grade nodes with every large backbone carrier. In India, we've got four. We've got Reliance, we've got Airtel, we've got uh, BSNL and one more. And these are constantly monitoring the state of the internet in India at any given point in time. Right? So they're monitoring the state of the internet. They're also measuring the performance of every CDN. And if you go to our website, you will see by industry what the response time users are getting across multiple industries. So we've stack ranked every industry from banking to brokerages to insurance to retail. And you will see the end user response time coming in from, for different industries. And we stack rank them you know, in terms of fastest to slowest, right? We also do synthetic monitoring in the enterprise. And in terms of the data center and cloud, we have the ability to go and track every single transaction. Every single transaction. So we take a transaction view of application ma management. Whether it's a web query or whether it's a it's a financial transaction like a stock trade execution or a buy now. We have the ability to track every single transaction all the way from the user click down to the database. And wherever there is a the contention issue, we have the ability to call it out. So we can diagnose issues at the, you know, right down to the line of code, at the code level, at the object object level, at the method level. Now let's let's extend this because that was our view of application monitoring in any context. It could be in the context of an enterprise, it could be in the context of the cloud. Now cloud monitoring is a necessary part and an extension of application monitoring, right? The first step, cloud impact analysis. Now people who are looking to take a decision, should I do, should I go with the cloud, should I not go with the cloud? Like I said, there's a set of free tools. If you go to a booth, you can see it live because it's telling you minute by minute the performance of Amazon, of Azure, of any of the large cloud providers anywhere in the world. So you want to drill down by what, what is the cloud performance. So we've got a set of sample applications that we've built and we're always testing the performance of those applications against those cloud providers. And you will see what is the response time you're getting against those applications with different cloud providers in different locations. Right? The reason why we, we did that is because we kind of figured out that there's really, there has to be a one, one stop window and it has to be not an expensive window to experiment because we are still early stages here. It's got to be free for people to figure out if they're taking a decision, how can we help you understand which cloud provider is right for you, which cloud provider is right for you in which context. Right? We kind of figured out that, that the world isn't as flat as we thought, that performance with Amazon is going to be the same everywhere because this is an example of you know, 
two cities in the US. We can easily show you for two cities in India right now. What is the same application with the same service provider and what is the difference, difference in response times? Sometimes it's 100, 100 to 200%. So that's, that's our Cloud Sleuth initiative. It's, it's available online for free at cloudsleuth.net. It offers, it's again, it's a community. This is not our technology. This is a community with about 40,000 people who are, who are constantly contributing towards making the web and the cloud you know, much faster. There are two critical components of Cloud, uh, cloud Sleuth. The first is a global provider view, which, I, which as I mentioned will tell you what is the performance of every single cloud provider in any location at any given point in time. The second one is a cloud performance, a CDN performance analyzer. So for those of you considering looking at a CDN and saying, is a CDN going to add value to my life? How much? You know, logically we think that putting a CDN in and using caching and everything else is going to make things faster. The reality is, most of the time, but not all of the time. Now, there are specific instances where putting a CDN in has actually resulted in dramatically large response times. So before you think about that, just, just, just go to the website, look at this. We'll tell you why, in some cases, the CDNs, instead of improving performance, have actually degraded it. Again, if you want, if you want to see it live, it's the demo is running in the booth out there, or the website is always available. Now, this is the first step, right, if you're looking at making a cloud investment outside. Coming back to our perspective that application management is, is necessary from the end user perspective, we have the ability to clap, capture every single click, right? So we have the, the ability to capture every single click. We, we know the impact of every single click on your application. We can tell you a click on the buy now button causes a 1.2% CPU overhead because the tools are get, they get down to such granular detail. We tell you where your users are coming from. We tell you what, what actions they're doing. And this is, again, it's, it's nothing new for people in the, in the management space. This is like clearly business transaction management, right, from the end user experience perspective. The other thing we do is because the standard response to, to application slowness is, and I hate to say this, but a lot of vendors will tell you throw more CPU, throw more memory, you know, who hasn't heard that before? But are those informed decisions or are those traditional, you know, spray and pray kind of approaches? Now, we are able to tell you the impact of every single component of your infrastructure and its rendering in terms of your application. Use these tools to understand if adding more CPUs is going to give you the answer, right? So a large part of the value add that you can get out of this is something like cost avoidance. Don't necessarily add more virtual machines. It's not the answer. Don't throw more, more hardware at the problem. The third thing, you know, making sure that you have the ability to monitor a, a dynamic environment. This is, really, this is really cool. Okay, So this is our solution's ability to go and auto-discover your cloud environment today. And when you run this, believe it or not, we've kind of figured out that even people who think they don't use a cloud service You'd be surprised at how many finally discover that they use cloud service, and we can auto discover across multiple cloud, you know, cloud platforms. So whether it's an Amazon cloud platform or whether it's Azure, our solution once it runs will detect what cloud services you're using and start man measuring and managing, you know, uh, the necessary metrics that you need to keep your business running. Did I also mention that you know even in a cloud environment, especially if it's a, a, not just a hybrid cloud from the public-private perspective, but a set of different cloud aggregators and different cloud services, we still have the ability to go down to the line of code that might cause a problem. I spoke about business transaction management in a different context. I'm going to come down to this now. There is, there is this whole movement coming up around real-time transaction intelligence. Okay, Customers want to know at any given point in time, how many users are on my system, how many users are at the shopping cart level. Yes, your line of business systems will give it to you. Your, you know, your e-commerce system will give it to you. In context of what you've got, in terms of hardware, in terms of applications, if you want to figure out exactly what the impact is of an advertising campaign that you just launched, you put in a small advertising campaign on your website saying 20% off for the next 20 minutes and you want to see the impact on your revenue at any given point in time. With every transaction, there is something called a variable that is captured as part of the transaction. 
Now the variable is usually a, a username. Is, if it's a registered user, it could be a phone number, it could be anything. Against every single transaction, meaningful information is captured that can be correlated. You know, defining different qualities of service for different, different people, like platinum card holders, gold card holders, things like that. All of this is possible, ensuring that you optimize quality of service without having to differentiate your environment. Making sure that platinum holders always get a better experience or a faster experience than a user who's just browsing for the first time. All of this capability is possible with BTM, right? Now, in terms of cloud platform support, we do automatic ma management and monitoring of Azure environments. And coming down to you know, what we call the, the storage access and costs and the access and performance, so we actually tell you the cost per transaction on Azure. So if you've, if you've invested in the, in the Azure platform and you've, you're getting so much business coming in as a result of so many transactions that are happening in a day or a week or a month, we can actually correlate it to the amount of money you're paying to Azure for the service. This is a good way of baselining your costs and saying, is this the right cloud provider for my business? Because you get this for Azure, you get this for EC2, or you get this for every large cloud provider in the world. Ultimately, you know, it's, it's about making sure your users are happy and making sure that you have the lowest cost, right? When it comes to a private cloud, we, we do automatic management of VMware instances, we do Zen. Like I mentioned also, we have the ability to manage applications across multiple and hybrid clouds. And I'm not talking about we, I'm saying the technology is available today. So if you're not, you know, you should be considering this because the rate of adoption is, is, is just so phenomenal here. There is an incredible amount of interest in big data technologies, right? Simply because, you know, we've, it's, it's a great way to reduce costs and to build scale. And if you're building a large e-commerce application, at some point in time, you know, when you start off, you will say Oracle's good enough, SQL Server's good enough. But at, at some point in time, when you reach critical scale, and you, instead of spending tons and tons of money on per, per CPU or per core licenses now, you might consider going the NoSQL way, the open source way, the Hadoop way, the Cassandra way. We can manage this down to different instances of database, different stored procedures and different instances of database, and identify where the bottlenecks are. Right? We also have the ability to measure the impact of third-party services and CDNs. So a large amount of information that is relevant is already available free. More detailed information is, is also possible. And we do device-dependent usage, right? So we do performance across multiple devices with different CDNs. This is a marketing slide, but there's, there is a good reason why Frost & Sullivan called us the, the company of the year for cloud-based application performance management. Uh, more than that, for people who believe in Gartner, this is the magic quadrant for application performance management. And you know, the way to look at this is to go up and to go right, right? This is top right. It doesn't get better than this. I'm going to be on time, I promise you. So we treat everything that we do from the end user perspective, right? We have a set of tools. We have a set of tools that give you good insight, or brilliant insight, if you will, into what your infrastructure is doing. That's not the cool stuff. The cool stuff is our ability to do deep dive down to the line of code, right? The real cool stuff is our ability to measure everything from this perspective. And it isn't this perspective in a theoretical context. It isn't a user in a theoretical context. It's a user who's coming in on Android, on Firefox. Increasingly, you know, any kind of smartphone, any kind of PC, all of these users, across multiple service providers, who are we anyway measuring and monitoring, and all of this information is available, so feel free to drop by, ask us any questions if you need. Uh, that's pretty much it for me. Thank you so much. Yeah. Of uh, communicating with those specific cloud services. So, do you go in and discover those, or uh, does it need to be set up to? Yeah, so it is uh, the application has to be set up. Okay. And then it discovers on which platform is it running. So, we are looking at the application, we are not looking at the provider. Services. Yeah. So, the services get automatically discovered. So, for and example, the, the map, what you saw there was. So if independently you will know that you're using an Amazon or using a Azure, but you will not know for a transaction, it is cutting through multiple of these 
platforms. Okay. That discovery is what we do automatically, which is more critical, right? You want to know exactly. that so the transaction if, if is flowing if through multiple. To Salesforce, you identified. We just you could do this. Okay. best kept secret because we started operations about eight, you know, one year ago, right? In the last one year, we've got like blue chip customers in India right now, State Bank of India, Tata EIG, people like those who, who are increasingly looking at, at giving a superior customer experience, right? That's, and our global clients, if you, if you will, uh, Google, Amazon, Facebook, MSN, Yahoo, BBC, eBay, sorry. <laughs> 